The holiday season is upon us, and it's time once again to get ready to celebrate Christmas. The smell of the lamp oil always reminds me of working with the Henry family in the late 1850s. Allow me to share a bit of what life was like during the holidays in the village of Oshawa over 150 years ago. My name is Mary Cameron, and I'm in the service of the Henrys. I have lived with the family for several years now. Many chores and errands are my responsibility, such as shopping in the village of Oshawa. That's what all these parcels are for. With the Christmas holidays nearly upon us, the home has been especially busy, making sure all the preparations are in order before the big day. I'd like to take you along with me during one of the most anticipated times of the year. Oh, welcome back, Mary. Were you able to get everything we needed from the village? Of course, Miss Henry. Mr. Hislop did have to look in the storerooms for the vanilla extract, but he was able to find it in the end. Oh, thank you. Any exciting new news from the village? Nothing of note. However, many were just as surprised as we were by the snowfall. A few folks tried to use their carriages instead of cutters, and it made for an amusing sight seeing their wheels spin round and round. <laughs> I must remember to tell the boys to give the horses an extra scoop of oats. It was such a terrible drive up that road today. Here are the raisins you asked for, the extra sugar, and the sardines. Thank you, Mary. Christmas is just around the corner, but for us, preparations have been going on for weeks now. We are quite lucky that with Mr. Henry's successful farm, our sellers are quite stocked with preservatives. But for those who don't have a farm or livestock, they'll be making purchases at the shops in the village of Oshawa. Every family's Christmas meal traditions vary, but many tables this year will have feasts of turkey, ham, goose, mashed potatoes, beets, fried celery, and coleslaw. But many look forward to the desserts like lemon pudding, cranberry pie, fruits and nuts, and of course, the plum pudding. Preparations for the pudding started around the beginning of December, and everyone in the family helped and gave it a stir on Stir Up Sunday. It was steamed or boiled and is left to sit until it is to be served, getting frequent drinks of brandy to enhance the flavor. Miss Henry, I trust you have everything in hand at the moment? With Clara's help, I think everything is ready to go. Thank you, Mary. Shall I go bring Mr. Henry his correspondence? Yes, thank you. And may your Christmas be filled with cheer and festive celebrations. Sincerely, Thomas Henry. Mr. Henry is an avid writer, and with Christmas around the corner, he's been busy writing holiday cards to his friends in Toronto. Oh, good afternoon, Mary. You had a successful trip to the village, I trust? My timing was perfect. The postmaster had just finished sorting today's mail. Oh, and Mr. Burns wanted me to relay something to you. He is very much excited to hear your sermon next Sunday. How very kind of him. Oh, and I see I've received a letter from my brother William. I suppose he'll be expecting a prompt reply. Mr. Henry is a traveling minister. We are lucky to have him around this year as he is often away from home for weeks at a time. In fact, a few years ago, he was away for three weeks over Christmas. I know the children missed him dearly. Always eager to keep up with his correspondence, Mr. Henry is rather pleased with Mr. Horsley's invention, the Christmas card. Apparently, J.C. Horsley designed the first Christmas card for his friend Sir Henry Cole in 1843. 
Mr. Cole wanted a specially designed greeting for his friends and family that would save him the burden of having to write letters to everyone. You can see how this would be very appealing for a man like Mr. Henry. While I was able to pick up the latest post from Mr. Henry, I expect I'll be making the trip again in the coming days. The post office remains open for one hour in the morning on Christmas Day so that people can pick up any last minute cards and mail. Oh my mail. goodness, how the afternoon has gotten away from me. I'm expecting the Guy family to be arriving shortly. Mary, could you please go over to the parlor and ensure that everything is in order? Of course, Mr. Henry. Oh, excuse me. I'm just putting our final touches on the Christmas tree. This is a growing tradition here in Upper Canada one that was popularized first in England by Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's husband. It was an immensely popular tradition in Germany, a tradition that he brought back with him to the royal family. Perhaps you noticed the sprigs of evergreens, boxwood, and holly throughout the hallways. Evergreens like these symbolize new growth and hope in the cold, dreary winter. One must be very careful with lighting the tree. Candles can be very tricky. Because of this, the Henrys only light the candles on a small number of occasions throughout the holidays. And there is always a bucket of water nearby in case of fire. Our families sing carols, play parlor games, <laughs> and listen to ghost stories after dinner. In recent years, A Visit from St. Nicholas is a popular poem to recite, especially for the children. The author, Clement Seymour, wove such an imaginative tale of Father Christmas and his reindeer visiting homes and leaving gifts of candy, mittens, or pennies for all that were good. That must be the Guy family. Welcome, please come in. Thank you. It's dreadfully cold outside. Gentlemen, Merry Christmas. Please join me in the study for a moment. Mary, come and help with dinner, please. Supper time. Can I help carry anything? I'm all warmed up. Oh, oh, here. You carry the soup and the potatoes. And you, young sir, carry the carrots. And you, Claire, can carry the fried celery. And I will carry our prized turkey. Do we have dessert now? Plum pudding is the highlight of the Christmas meal. It's made of flour, brown sugar, lemon and orange peel, suet, raisins, and currants. You may be wondering where the plums are in the plum pudding. What you call raisins, we often refer to as plums. At last, the most anticipated dessert of the year is upon us. That was the last winter I spent with the Henry family. Oh, but it's such a merry time of year. I'll always remember Christmas with Thomas and Lorenda. The taste of the plum pudding, the smell of the evergreens, and the flicker of the lanterns. I loved every moment I was there.